I hit it. We are, yay, hey. Good morning, everybody. Sabaho, actually. Sabaho, everybody, and welcome back to the channel. I should have started it with my uh, normal greeting. Um, today, we are, this is, uh, what is it, March 21st, so 3-21-20, depending where you are. It could be 21-3-20, depending, on, again, on the the way you look at dates. Uh, but I'm here with my buddy Juan Carlos Bagnell again for another video. Uh, we did a, uh, well, we've done actually quite a few streams before, but uh, today's basically focusing on a device that we both have been waiting for for some time. Good morning, sir. How are you? I'm doing well. It, like we we were talking just before we went live, we were just kind of sorting out some of our, every live stream has those fun little unique challenges right before you get started. But we exactly. were like, oh, you know what we should do? We should try and show this off. So I'm, I'm scrambling to just set up like a screen capture and we're going to be able to show some stuff in the stream so uh that that's yeah i uh, that's the beauty about this is that the we can actually share with you guys some of the things we've been doing for the last uh, i would say almost about a full 24 hours i wouldn't even call it a 48 hours because i feel like you know the, like the first 33 hours and change <laughs> <laughs> yeah but i figured that's never gonna nobody's ever gonna look like uh first 33 hours and change I'm like We'll, we'll have to work on that one. Uh, but yes, it, the, the goal today, obviously, is for us to to talk a little bit. It's more of a sequel or a second part to the original live stream. And if you haven't had a chance to check that out, um, Juan Carlos and I made a uh, live stream a couple of days ago uh, around Thursday night. Um, and this over on his channel. I'll give you guys links to his channels, of course, on the YouTubes, the Twitters, and the Instagrams, as well as the, U well, did I say Twitter? Yes, I did. Yeah. Um, and uh, all, and over it's good all over the place. Uh, some gadget guy, and of course, some audio guy for if you guys are interested in audio stuff. Uh, but yes, uh, that that one was actually a very nice, a lot of fun. A lot of people were joining us there, so hopefully we'll get a lot of people here. And I'm already seeing uh, Fat Produce is in the in the actual stream, of course. Daniel is in there. Um, Hi uh, ha Harry's okay, yeah. And then of course, uh, Abdul Hamid is over there as well, and Matt Tyler, of course, just joined us as well. Good morning, everybody. And Sam, um, I see Sam saying good morning there too. We got a whole yeah, yeah. room ready to go here. I love it. Um, yeah, yeah. No, I am. I am just stoked to talk about the well, world to talk more about this device obviously because i can't talk enough about it um so I, I would first and foremost hopefully you guys are watching this hope you guys are safe and obviously uh take care of yourself in this time and make sure that you are you are with loved ones you are saying hello to everybody and anybody that you can think of and you know let's hope uh everybody's doing good uh so how's your morning so far sir uh doing okay doing okay I, uh, I i like uh i'm off my schedule you know i think that's that's the thing like so many of us there are some changes in our work life schedules and so i my body is still not doesn't know what to do with these this different yeah time table it, that I'm on. It, it doesn't feel like a saturday to me which is the weird part because i woke up by my normal schedule that i normally wake up during the week mm -hmm. um but yeah definitely being home for 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 the last five days uh, consistently waking up, going and staying home uh, has been interesting. Uh, but yes, so both of us have been playing with the, sorry for the reflection there, the V60 ThinQ. Um, I'm just calling it the V60 from now on. No need to add oh, the yeah. ThinQ. Uh, but uh, both of us are also using the T-Mobile variant of this. So just be aware that I, that's the experience that we're using here. And, and I think you've, you're you're on T-Mobile. Uh, you said you were using already on, on the T-Mobile network. You've been checking out the speeds. And how, how's that been working yeah. for you as far as 5G and Well, the my neck of the woods is, is way suburban. So we've got mm -hmm. miserable cell coverage. I mean, it's not even a T-Mobile issue. It's, it's all of the major carriers out here are putting out towers sort of at the bare minimum for the hills. You know, mm -hmm. uh, if you traveled west on the 101, you get to like this really picturesque suburban communities. Like you've you've seen the housing communities in the show Weeds from back in the oh, day. Oh, okay, yeah, 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 yeah. That's kind of where I'm at now, and uh, the cell towers are easily blocked by all of the rolling hills. So there's been no significant 5G push in my new in my new location. Um, oh. I mean, I'm what I'm what I'm essentially doing is comparing this against. Uh, Google Fi because my personal SIM is on is on Fi and now I'm using a loaner SIM from T-Mobile and it's about the same <laughs> because Fi and I think the only signal Fi can find is a T-Mobile tower too so we're, we're and, and I think that's both. exactly and I think that's what most of us uh, it, it depends on who you're using Fi jumps between different carriers if you're not familiar in the U.S. or even internationally that's the beauty of actually the service that they offer 
Uh, for me, I've been able to get some decent speeds, actually, and uh, I'll go ahead and put this one on. I don't know what this guy's doing here. I, I, I don't know. Uh, but I've been actually able to get uh, the fastest I was able to hit up was uh, 100 down, 106 down, and 37.6. Uh, that's that's it's actually decent, and it is actually the 5G network on there. Uh, but I was also able to kind of average between like 27, which is more like LTE connectivity, as well as 31. So uh, I think it's, you know, T-Mobile's 5G's deployment is getting better. And I don't necessarily live in uh, the main uh, Los Angeles area. I'm actually closer to northern LA, so I'm almost, almost at the edge side. Uh, but I was quite surprised that when they did turn on the switch for 5G, my area did actually did actually benefit from it, which is I nice. I still think, I mean, we had this conversation when we went and did, when we were together at that Sprint mixer. Yeah, the 5G Our, Sprint one last year. Mixer, like we're, we're going to a fancy party to talk about Sprint. <laughs> Sorry, I, I, I'm on my, I'm, I'm on one cup of coffee here, so I might be a little shaky to start. Um, I really feel like 5G is not being sold properly if we're talking speed, 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 speed. Because we still yeah. haven't even reached on T-Mobile flipping the switch, we still haven't yeah. even really reached the theoretical maximum of 3G. These are no. still technically HSPA speeds. That oh, I, I agree. But when and I've I'm hit hoping, 200 on uh, on LTE before, it's it's not it's not a, yeah. It depends on how you are where you are in the tower. Yeah. But what I'm what I'm hoping is that 5G, uh, or, or at least what I what I hope consumers will will come to understand is this new uh, radio and antenna deployment for 5G, mm -hmm. especially if T-Mobile's strategy is anything like Sprint's, and we're seeing some more of those Nokia boxes going up, is that this should be all about uh, relieving network congestion and improving mm -hmm. um, uh, connectivity. And then finally getting a little bit more access to the backhaul that they've had. Because once an LTE tower is saturated, that's, that's, I think, one of the key factors in seeing people's speeds drop. Um, exactly. We're finally getting the speeds that we could have had on LTE, but because we're we're doing much smarter radio management. I agree. And and the one thing that you also keep, want to keep in mind, um, even though the device most of the time will say 5G, it actually does bounce between LTE and 5G. Uh, the best way to see that is when you're running a speed test on your device. It, it actually shows it. It tells you that you're doing an LTE speed test as opposed to 5G. So yeah. uh, I think it, it I, it's a welcome change and it's a, a change in the right direction. And we'll have to see how the situation ends up happening when you know Sprint and T-Mobile join. Uh, and how that actually uh, goes. Yeah, see, screen sharing is working I just, I pretty just good. wanted to check before we tried to rely on it. So I do have screen share working. <laughs> no, no, good, good. Um, I do want to say good morning to Majid Sabaho. Uh, Bill, uh, Bill Kamar is in there. Uh, IK Tech is in there. And then, of course, we have uh, Sam's also kind of jumping in. Um, so uh, asking, obviously, you know, how is as far as retail pricing? So the only retail pricing that we have, obviously, is based on what we have available in the U.S. right now. And that's T-Mobile's mostly. And it's a $7.99 for the device itself. And if you do want to pick it up with the case at the same time, it's $8.99. And yeah, and, and I think that's a great, you have to consider the fact that if you don't consider the case itself as $7.99, we're going to talk about some of the impressions that we've had with the 24 hours and obviously talk about some of the main specifications that we we feel that that stands out to us after using it and what we were looking forward to. Is it still good? Is it, you know, are we in that honeymoon phase or is that really, you know, good stuff that you can actually jump into? I'm, I'm not going to lie. There is a little bit of a honeymoon phase. I'm not going to lie. I'm going to start off by saying there yeah, is. Yeah, you know, like getting, getting a new gadget, getting a new toy, it should light you up a little bit. Again, a little, it, yeah. We, we know, we, we know, we know manufacturers love to jump on this, like influencers and reviewers and YouTubers, you know, getting that excitement or that buzz. And that's what, like, that first week of embargo week coverage is. Exactly. We don't get that on LG because LG's distribution is always kind of, huh? Um, so there was no embargo period. <laughs> it's just like, well, no, no, it's gonna be available to buy tomorrow. So here's some review units, <laughs> and we're like, okay, and cool. I appreciate it. I, I'm I'm happy to be able to actually get it. Uh, as as we saw, some some people also talk about it on Twitter a little bit. Uh, there's been some challenges with what's going on right now. Not not all the yeah. stores are open, so availability. Your best bet, obviously, is to just get it if you're going to order it. Which I did see one of our uh, one of our uh, commenters here saying that they did pick one up. Uh, I would say just give them a call. Call T-Mobile, uh, do yeah. the order, and then uh, they actually tweeted that they're doing a uh, I think it's a two day fast shipping. For free so you should be able to pick it up and get it as soon as possible um and it's definitely a great upgrade especially if you're around like the g4 the g6 the g7 uh, timeline um and we'll talk about some of the differences about the g7 specifically since uh 
you know, Juan Carlos loves the uh, the boombox effect, and we'll talk about the sound yeah. as, as we progress in our morning uh, conversation. So uh, <laughs> I can't so, believe you got uh, me to say it feels better in the hand. I'm so mad. I, I, and and it, like, and I saw you walking into it too. I was like, <laughs> oh my god! It's like I was, it happened. Uh, I was on the train tracks and I couldn't jump, so uh, no. it came out of my mouth. No good. All right. Uh oh. Did I lose TK or did TK lose? Oh no. no. Oh no, I'm back. <laughs> okay. This is gonna be fun. We're back. Welcome back. And we're right. back. Yeah. Uh that was a short break. <laughs> V30 baby. Oh man, the V6. He's okay. So we have Grease. So when well, just so you know, because I know you haven't done um uh oh, TK's a spinning wheel. It is. I'm we're, back. We're we're gonna do this. We're gonna get this done. I promise you. Um, when you're going through the live comments, if you hover and click over them, you can pop them up on on the screen. There you go. Hey, V30 baby, getting the V60 on Monday. Thank you. I That's am learning this process. Jump. You are gonna like jumping from a V30 to a V60. It it's that's a massive jump actually. It's a uh, quite a bit. Uh, the only thing obviously that you're going to definitely notice when you open a box is a massive sticker saying that there is no replaceable battery. Oh, uh, V30 was was a uh, locked in battery too. So. Was it the V20 then? The last one with the metal back then? The last one. Ah, yeah. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. The last premium phone to have an IR blaster and a uh, uh, removable battery. Yeah. No. No. Definitely. Uh, Ooh, interesting. We got a V60 viewer. Hey, <laughs> hey good morning. Doing Watching a V60 video on a V60, you know, Saturday morning. Cool. So let's go ahead and start up with, uh, actually, I'll, I'll let you start off with your uh, your impressions. I mean, obviously, it's been it's been about a day, you know, Friday. We got a chance to spend sp uh, Friday, like an entire one day. I got a chance to go through at least one full battery cycle on this. Um, and I'm going, I mean, I need to charge it. I didn't get a chance. So I started up this morning with like 17%. So that's why I have my wireless charger on the table. Uh, but how, how was your experience yesterday? How, how did that go? So, I mean, that's one of the things too, is the battery life is deceptively good until it's not. Um, mm -hmm. We're in that scramble to install all of our social media and multimedia apps and services and games. I'm, there, I'm putting a ton of games on this thing where yeah. LG is is finally, I, I feel finally competitive for gaming. Um, I would say from the V, actually more, more like from the G8 on. Um, mm -hmm. I would always feel like they were kind of underpowering their devices. I think uh, LG was still very concerned about thermals and performance and boot looping. And so like the G6 to the, I'd say the G6 to the V40, you always mm -hmm. felt like you were just a half step behind what Samsung was doing um, in terms of- Because I think they, used, they were doing the, for the G series, they were giving it last year's SOC. And then for the V series, they were giving well, it in this year's the, SOC, the, right? The G7 though, the G7 was a current SOC, but mm. I think there was some kind of LG thermal throttling happen, happening when that device, uh, when, when that phone launched. Because yeah. you put them up, you know, it's like, it's the same SOC. We've got the same amount of RAM, same screen resolution. And yet, you know, my Samsung is, feels just a little bit snappier. And this one just it feels like it's kind of struggling to get some of that higher performance. And, and, okay. and that was also at the, around the time that LG was really uh, was, was really starting to push like their game software. Mm -hmm. But when you would launch a game natively, the phone would automatically scale back the resolution and the frame rate. And you would have to go into their little game app to turn the settings back up higher. And even then, it still didn't feel like it would compete now. That doesn't seem to be an issue, and and this is a phone that doesn't seem to that doesn't seem to struggle maximizing the potential of the uh, the Qualcomm chipset. So uh, you know, in talking about battery life, mm -hmm. I'm using it as a standalone phone. I'm slapping the dual case on it. Great, 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 great. And then I realize like I've been using this phone super heavy, and the battery is actually starting to get low. <laughs> but we're talking some some pretty incredible aggressive setup use. I'm um, going yeah. through my video rendering tests, my video benchmarks, my stabilization test. Um, I did do my quad DAC uh, recording samples. I still need to do Perfect. my speaker tests. Um, kind of trying to fly through some of this just to get some of it produced uh, uh, efficiently. And uh, the, the the phone is a tank. Um, mm. For for better for worse, it's a big 
phone. It it doesn't it, yes great in a front pocket, um, but that is also giving us some of the benefits of absolutely incredible multitasking and a battery to really live up to that extra flexibility. Yes, no, no, I am very happy with the 5,000 milliamp hour that they added. The, the additional battery ne is needed, obviously, not just to power the main device, but if you do, like you were saying, jumping in between you know, the dual screen option or using it on its own. So you have the option of doing it both, obviously. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the benefits of the dual screen are also very good. And what I like about it is that it's also uh, supporting the fast charging if you're wanting to keep it in there with the new magnetic clip. So I saw that a few more people did get a chance to uh, order them. And um, yeah, it's on buy one, get one free actually from T-Mobile. What, what a deal, like, yeah. wow. No, 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 um, no, no. It's too expensive and LG never does anything right and it's all gimmicks and they never do anything innovative, but there are too many gimmicks and it's too expensive. It is, you know, that is, that I, is I think the only thing you're allowed to say about LG on YouTube and that you should buy another phone instead. And thank you for joining us. That was a great live stream. Uh, well, come back That's with us again next time. weekend. Yeah. Uh, really <laughs> and everybody love TK's merch store and uh, buy some merch. And then yeah, please, please make sure to check out the shirts. Uh, I should have been wearing one of the shirts. <laughs> um, I do want to jump in real quick with, uh, well, here, uh, Mr. Fat Produce, uh, our buddy over. Yeah. Um, so interesting enough, I did actually ask that question um, last time when we were sitting down with them. And at this point, and my understanding is that they don't have a, a timeline. They, they didn't say it wasn't happening, uh, but they said at this point, there is no timeline for an unlocked version of the V60. Uh, so it depends if it actually going to be, it may end up being a V60, or even if possibly, if they do end up releasing it as a G9 variant, uh, if that ends up being a, a, something that they can consider, and maybe that's when we'll see an unlocked model as that one will be more in a different market. They won't release the G9 and the V60 in the same markets. Uh, but I, I don't know if you heard anything else or different. I, I just couldn't get a straight answer from them at the time, at least. I, I the, the reason why I, this is this is still probably going to be a little bit shakier. And, and we've gotten a couple tweets, like after the stream that we did just kind of on our first day, our first <laughs> afternoon impressions. <laughs> Not even day, um, yeah. I, I, I'll be curious to see if there is a way to do an unlocked version of this phone, which makes sense for the North American market. Um, yeah. Because every carrier seems like they're going to have different restrictions or different certifications or just even different antenna arrangements for their protocol, their, their version of 5G. So exactly. I'm not sure we're going to get a V60 like we got the G8X. You know, um, yeah. I, I hope we do. But if we do, it's probably going to come much, much later um, or it'll, it'll we'll, we'll get the sort of certifications for that at a time when it just doesn't even make sense to re-release an unlocked V60. Um, I hope I'm wrong. I, I hope that there's a way to kind of do this in a way that consumers could just go out and buy the device directly. But I think right now carriers are going to have by 5G on lock until there's some standardization of the different uh, radio profiles. I agree, and I and I think it's definitely it's a, it was it would have been a nice thing because I love the fact that the G8X was come did actually get released as an unlocked model and you could just pick it up. But like you're saying, there is a pretty much very well integration. Well, there's a very good integration uh, of carrier specific content, specifically on the T-Mobile variant, and we'll get a chance to talk about that a little bit. Um, and you could definitely see why at this point it's not exactly feasible, but Hopefully, when it does become available, people are still interested in it, and then we're not going to be too close to maybe the next release of another device like from LG. Either again, either an unlocked G9X, or maybe even we'll have to see whatever the because they did the G8 and then they did the G8X later on. So mm -hmm. it depends on the timeline. And in the US, we we jumped straight into a V. So that was the other thing. If you're wondering what happened to the G series, uh, the G8X was released late in 2019, uh, 2019 as an unlocked model, and I think uh, Juan Carlos has a, has has a device there. Um, and uh, sorry, I'm only pointing to him because I don't have one myself. So, and um, so that was actually a, a good successor to the G8, but it, that's when they started introducing the dual case options. If you haven't if you haven't seen those before in the U.S. market, because again, that was the first dual case device from LG in the U.S., and we're finally starting to see them in stores when you know the store starts physically opening up and of course on T-Mobile's site. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, but yes, so overall my impressions with the device at, at least after using it for on a full charge, I started up with 100% in the beginning of the day. 
uh, playing games. I actually installed quite a few of my favorite games, like you know, our, uh, first person shooters, uh, racing games, and I content cr- basically consumption has been a major driving point for me because I love being able to do multiple things. I if you have if you followed the channel for some time, you probably already noticed I covered the, you know the the Samsung Z Flip as well as the uh, foldables, and I also got a chance to play with. And I don't know if you had a chance to see some of the stuff online about the TCL foldables. There, there's going to be a lot of options out there for foldable displays. But what we didn't get a chance to see much at CES was that, you know, dual display functionalities. I think LG is doing a great job with the way they did the implementation with the G, well, the V60, because we're getting dual panels. We're getting the exact device in dual panels, uh, meaning it's literally like taking the display from your main phone and putting it on the left. And what I like about it is it's the fact that it's basically providing us the best of uh, best experience without having to worry about any kind of creases or issues or display failing after some point let's go ahead and switch over on this end uh, and, and, and that's, a, that's an important point when we're talking about the main phone durability is the, the you, you get know, you, you you might at some point smash your case you know yep. if the case does its job it, it is an expensive case to uh to, to lose but it should protect the main phone and then you can swap that out whereas a folding phone um I, I I just don't know that they really live up to daily lifestyle abuse in the same way. So I, again, I, I like it needs to be graded on a on a different system for durability and support. And I think this is this is the right transition step um, for a lot of consumers. You're not married to a dual screen device or a folding device. You've got sort of the best of both worlds at present. Exactly. And and you could totally fold it to the other side, use it as a as a, just a standard foldable device, just to even actually enjoy content. And and my favorite option is to be able to basically turn on like let's say Netflix or YouTube on the secondary display and then run like Twitter or another social media application on the main display. Uh, just just using it for all its glory. And of course, gaming is going to be absolutely fantastic on this. Uh, so I've already installed my apps and been playing with uh, you know PUBG running Asphalt Mine looks amazing. Um, I did notice though that I had to uninstall Asphalt Night. I don't know if you had a chance to play with your version I of it. Don't play Asphalt. <laughs> I, I needed to try it out because that was one of the games I tried out at the, uh, at the uh, PR uh, meeting. But I'm very happy. Uh, battery lasted me the entire day. Did not have to charge it, and I had about 17% this morning, which is why I'm charging it this morning. So I don't want the <laughs> I don't want it to die in the middle of the live stream. So very happy overall. Battery day one with the fact that I was setting up everything, playing, recording, uh, just doing a whole bunch of stuff, casting over on my Chromecast, sharing things with it, just. I, I'm really, really happy, and um, I like the little display on the outside. Actually, I think it's uh, it, it's oh, functional. Yeah. Actually, and, and it, again, it gives it, you more it, information. It's a hallmark of like re- returning LG to that little ticker display that used to be on the V10 and the V20. So I mean, again, yes, it's in- it's interesting, like how much DNA is still like classic LG, um, but obviously they've been they've been changing up their form factors. They've gotten rid of all of their like rear button placements, like all of those old LG elements are gone, but we still find these little, these little pieces of classic LG kind of floating through the phone design. Exactly, exactly. And I actually do miss the uh, the uh, classic uh, fingerprint sensor on the back. You remember the, yeah, like where they I took do. away all the, the power button and yet the, you, the fingerprint sensor was the power button. So that was one of their like iconic I, things. I, I That was so functional. I, I miss that so much from like the B10, B20 days. So interestingly enough, that's it's it, it's always been it's always been interesting how LG's experiments have been going. So for me, it's we kind of saw the evolution of the modular device. Uh, you know, we went from the G4 with that beautiful leather back, and then we kind of left leather back for quite some time. And now we're seeing them actually doubling down. This is kind of like the third iteration. I kind of mentioned this uh, a couple of days ago on the stream with uh, with you. Um, I'm liking what they've done here. I, I like the aesthetics. I like the grip. I like the, the little bit of a gripping uh, back here that it's not very slippery. Um, and what are your thoughts as far as the actual casing overall? I mean, I realize that this is a 6.8 inch display. So first and foremost, this is not a small device. Okay, this is I think is a 20 and a half by nine uh, by uh, nine mm-hmm. nine aspect ratio. It's a long phone, but it's a 6.8 inch display, and the case adds a little bit of a bulk. 
And personally, I, I found myself basically using it, I would say about 70% in the case because of the dual display functionality. Have you, did you see yourself using it mostly or do you, what, what's your thought oh, yeah. with the case um, itself? It, it lived in my case all day yesterday. Like I didn't yeah. take it out once. Um, the, uh, e even for, no, I did take it out to do the headphone test because my wide yeah. adapter doesn't plug in. So I did have to take it out for that. But it, it was really going through the uh, the setup and the, uh, like I'm cooking in the kitchen and I've got video streaming on the, the secondary display and I put the main screen to sleep, you know? So there was still a lot of single screen use, but mm -hmm. I, I, I didn't take it out. I, I'm, I'm impressed that for such a big phone, adding an entire second display really doesn't add that much bulk. I mean, overall, this is still a slimmer pro profile than most wallet cases. So the, the, the functionality is on point. Um, I'm, I'm very impressed with how they've iterated and improved like the hinge design, how they've cleaned up the rear panel so that it does fit better with the, the phone. It, mm -hmm. Funnily, it does make it just a little bit trickier to get the phone out of the case. Yeah. You have to kind of push against the camera module. So you really want to be careful when exactly. you're popping the phone out of the case. Um, but I, I don't know if that's, if that was like an intentional part of the design on the G eight X where you have other pressure points where you can bend the case and bend the frame of the case to pop the phone out. And here we actually have to touch the sensors every single and here, time. And here we have to touch the camera module. Um, but on, on the whole, uh, dual display is, is becoming one of those. I still can't say it's a necessity. Like if you consider yourself some kind of power user, multitasker, you're doing a ton of stuff on your phone, but mm -hmm. it's hard to leave when you, you know, you go back to a single screen experience. It, you know, you find yourself doing things where you're like, oh, right. Now, if I pull up my keyboard, it's going to block half my screen or, oh, now if I'm playing this game, I, I need to go and find a Bluetooth controller or I need to, uh, to use like, you know, less good on screen controls. Um, exactly. I, I, I played a lot of, uh, there's a, a Diablo clone called Anima, um, an mm -hmm. ARPG, and it doesn't support controllers. So like if I use my Bluetooth controller, I can, I, it'll recognize one analog stick, but then that's it. Oh, it doesn't recognize okay. any of the buttons. And so being able to like customize, customize. The button for button um, tap experience works so much better on on uh the on the v60 where even the that the, the i felt like there was just the tiniest little bit of button lag on mm -hmm. the g8x obviously because i mean you you tap on one screen and it sends a signal to tap to fake a tap on the other yeah, screen that's screen. the v60 seems to be handling that better so again it, it, it's um I've I've been I've been very happy with this iteration of the dual screen experience. Um, I, I don't see myself taking it out of this case often, whereas I felt like the V50 was almost kind of uh, like 60, 40 out of the case in the case. Mm -hmm. Now, if you think like V60 is most of my review is probably going to be done with the phone in the dual screen case. And and I think for me, my only reason I actually did need to take it out is because I wanted to listen to music uh, and I wanted to use the actual three and a half millimeter headphone jack. So I, I do need an extender, uh, somewhat of a, I think it's like a three and a half millimeter headphone jack extension. Yeah. So like the one uh, Juan Carlos is putting out right there, uh, that one actually uh, will help a lot because the case, unfortunately, uh, does not have a, a wide enough. Oh, well. It has a wide enough opening for standard headphones, but if you're trying to use something with a uh, higher impedance that you want to be able to drive, like better headphones, like the Just, 770s that yeah, I have. Better better shielding, or even, uh, yeah. I I don't think many right angle, you know, a lot of the headphones that have right angle adapters are going to fit on the seat. I, I was going to say most. To pop it out. So you do need that. And fortunately, it, there is no extension or an extender cable inside of the box. So I'm waiting for that one to deliver. And so, uh, but I think with that with that option, I think what I also love about it is uh, you actually get better handling on the device if you think about it. Like from just even propping it to be able to take video, um, if you want to set it on the table or even just prop it on the table in a kind of a, I would say more of a open style like this. So you get a chance to actually hold the device in. Uh, it actually works much better. It, and, and I feel yeah. like the, uh, the the ergonomics are very nice. But uh, well, not and, to make this... You just, you just have to like conceptualize. You know, people love buying like kickstand cases. And now yep. you really properly do not need one in portrait no. or in landscape view. You have either like a little laptop style clamshell or you prop up two vertical panels. And that's... I, I did a live stream for Newegg yesterday. 
and I moved my chat over to the V60 so that I could just keep the chat floating all around my table. And I, you know, you don't have to like put it on like a little desktop stand or a little cradle or anything like that. It's just a part of the phone that it'll, it'll stand up on its own <laughs> no matter where you want to put it. A built-in kickstand, if if you uh, to say, uh, but let's go ahead and jump in real quick to the to the live stream. We have a couple of questions coming in with some super chats. I do want to say first, before I forget, thank you, Fat Produce, for the super chat. I didn't get a chance to say that before, uh, but we'll jump over first to Derek. Uh, let's go ahead and add him into the feed. Uh, does your V60 randomly play music? Um, I'm actually gonna. So I, if you haven't heard it on yours, I'm gonna say yes on mine, mm -hmm. um, and I'll explain where the music is coming from because that's a perfect segue into what I wanted to talk about, some of the pre-installed applications on our device. Um, so randomly, and I'll, I'll, I'll preview that by saying it doesn't randomly start playing music. Like if I had it on the table and I walked away, it doesn't automatically start. Uh, but if you have, or if you've tried using it, and I'm hoping this is the case that your situation happened, because that's how it happened to me. Um, when I was opening the the, uh, the uh, Google feed on the left side on your launcher, so if you open up the device and you're in the, let's go ahead and switch over on the top side. So I'll go ahead and unlock the phone. Uh, for us on the device, if you're using it here, you swipe to the left, you have your Google feed. Uh, the T-Mobile variant has two tabs, and you'll notice mine does not have two tabs. But um, one, I don't know if yours still has the two tabs, I think, Hold on. right? I actually, this is one of the things that we tried to set up my uh, my screen capture for so that we could go into this. Yeah, so we were, we were trying to talk about it this morning. So if you swipe to the left uh, where you normally have your normal Google feed, um, the and I hope it shows up on, on, on your side. Let me go ahead. Does it? Let's pop in. Uh, you know, it cuts off the top part of your screen. Oh, hold on, hold on. I I tried shifting the uh, the aspect ratio there. Let me um, give me one second. So a, as back. you're setting it up there, okay. Let's go and see. Well, it's it's still cutting off the top, isn't it? Oh, yeah. Um, are we gonna be able? Nope. Man, that's weird. Well, can you can actually? I would say just go ahead. Just click the T-Mobile tab. There's, there's there's supposed to be two tabs on the actual launcher. Um, so what'll end up happening essentially is that you have a Google feed here and there. The T-Mobile tab for some reason auto plays videos and it starts playing music in the background. And even if you switch back to the normal feed and you even go home, the application keeps playing music in the background. It's mm -hmm. this is called the uh, T-Mobile Play application. It's part of their I would say like Google feed uh, similar aesthetics, but it has a lot of videos in there. So for me, I disabled it, and um, that's the only reason why you don't see it here anymore. That's why the feed for me is pretty much just Google only, and that was what's playing music for me in the background. Uh, so if you're experiencing that and you were playing around with that T-Mobile feed, that's probably where the audio is coming in on yours. But other than that, no, I didn't have any other like random music playing uh, or any kind of issues going on with uh, like the audio just randomly starting for me. But I appreciate the question. And, and again, thank you very much, Derek. Um, let me go ahead and jump over on the other end. And let me know, Derek, by the way, if this is something that was actually going on on your end. Uh, we'll no, jump on. over I, to. I'm gonna, I'm, well, I'm gonna I'm gonna disable this while we're talking about it. You said it was the T-Mobile Play app. Oh, actually, just look for it in your uh, in your app drawer. Oh, but yeah, go ahead. Just go ahead and disable it. So just disable this. Yeah. So and what we're trying to say is obviously there's nothing. If you like the application, you want to be able to use the uh, the T-Mobile Play app. Uh, that's something that you're obviously able to do, and you're able to re-enable it if you want to as well. Uh, but if you do disable the app in the launcher, it takes it out of your system, and you actually when you start that secondary tab will eventually disappear from your launcher. So when you swipe to the left, you just get Google Play at uh, the, do I need to the Google Now feed. The restart the phone or something or? that's how i did it online but for the oh, most okay. part is let me let me uh, switch back to my camera and then uh we'll i'll give that a reboot and we'll make yeah. sure that it's gone tk we'll make sure that you're giving people good advice okay here buddy okay All okay right. yeah no no definitely uh but obviously the proof is in the pudding as you guys could see already on mine i uh, i don't have that showing and we'll get a chance to see it on on jc's we're on juan carlos's side um the other question here we have is from daniel uh New newella hopefully I'm, well daniel um, sorry for the last name, by the way. Uh, thank you very much again for the super chat. Uh, does the Verizon V60 have both sub six and MM wave, um, or just one? Um, from what I remember, actually, uh, actually they have both. Uh, they the Verizon version. The way it was explained to me is that they have the millimeter wave and the sub six, but only T-Mobile had the sub six and not the millimeter wave. And I'm hoping that's. I think that's what you both heard from from our conversations with them, uh, which kind of makes sense because of the the way the deployment. 
Verizon's primary, you know, uh, I'd say 5G implementation has been millimeter wave. Uh, so, you know, mostly stadiums, big parks, areas where there's like basically massive coverage and they're able to set up a set, like a, a main tower and broadcast fast connections to a lot of devices without having to worry about, you know, uh, you know, building penetration or anything like that. So, uh, yes. I mean, we, I, I don't know that we'll know for certain until we get some good teardowns because I think exactly. we're, we're so comfortable you know, destroying LTE enabled phones that we know what to look for, for, for radios and for antenna arrays. Exactly. Um, until someone can disassemble a Verizon model and we can see what the antenna differences might be. My hypothesis is that one of the reasons why the Verizon model is, is only coming in one flavor with the dual screen included and that it's a little bit more expensive than the T-Mobile variant is because of some antenna differences to include a millimeter wave. That would be my guess, but it could just also be pricing differences because Verizon thinks they can charge you more. So uh, I'm, I'm hoping that we'll get a clear answer on that once the phone actually properly launches in retail. Yeah, no, no, again, this literally, it, the, the device literally came out yesterday. So it, it, we're talking about like brand new. And the good thing is there's quite a few people that are very interested about it. And that's why they've already kind of purchased it. And like I said, I think I mentioned it on your stream. I said, um, even if I wasn't able to get this as a, possibly as a review device to be able to check out, I was going to pick it up either way. I was extremely happy, very ecstatic that it's back on T-Mobile because I, that was always something I, I did. I always like to play around with the LG devices, see some of the new experiments that they're trying to go through and what they want to offer us. Uh, so battery life, again, you're not going to be disappointed. It does include a 25 watt adapter in the box for quick, well, quick charge 5.0, and it does work through the case. So just kind of a, something that you want to be aware of. Um, and I think... Uh, Guan, you, you you mentioned it on your stream. Uh, this actually has additional pins. So this pin adapter does. is actually, let's go ahead and bring this up for you guys. Oops, and if I can center it, uh, it actually has additional uh, adapters, uh, more pins. I think three pins extra than what we had with the G8X. Yeah, so if you're coming G8X in from the G8X, G8X, yeah. So you're definitely going to be able to get it and, and enjoy it. Let's go ahead and bring that one here. And um, so data connection is possible through the case. Um, I think audio should be possible as well over USB, if I'm not mistaken, because data transfers. But I, I did not get a chance to test that part out. I'll have to try that out. Yeah, um, I, I didn't get a chance to uh, like I'm pretty sure video out doesn't work. Um, yes. So video out does not. And I did actually test that out because I was trying to yeah. see if I can get it to work with my deck next doc. So uh, there is, is a little finicky with the next doc. It, it's pretty funny. Yeah. Um, Very finicky. I couldn't even get it to work. I like. I tried seriously. Short of doing a rain dance two seconds before putting in the next talk, I couldn't get it to to like remotely. The only way to get it to work was to use uh, an MHL adapter and connect it to it over HDMI. So over and, HDMI and for me, it worked. I, I I can get it to work, but it does require a bit more of like a voodoo dance ceremony. <laughs> I I <laughs> I, like I, 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 I I want the cheat code, but you just send me the cheat up, down, down, left, left, right, right all right. of that good yeah. stuff. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, because that's the only way to get it to go. Um, but yeah, no, uh, desktop mode is in here. This is Android 10.0 with some tweaks from LG. Um, I feel like it's actually the best implementation of the Android 10 uh, desktop mode that you can find today without having to buy a, I, I, I'm going to say buy a service, but like subscribe to a monthly service or something like that, because I think there are other options yeah. that kind of install a secondary launcher. Um, and uh, speaking of which, why not, you know, get a chance to show that off. Uh, but so you've been using it with the next doc. Have you noticed any, any issues with the, uh, responses, the touch response, the, uh, you know, no, I mean, it's, it's very much like, uh, where we were with the V52 after the Android mm -hmm. 10 update. I mean, it's, it's just a more powerful phone and being able to manage that kind of usage is, is an improvement. The, the, the issues that we still find are more on the Google side. So for all the work LG has done to clean up the uh, the, the resolution, the DPI, um, pixel pitch, all of that stuff, um, there are still a few apps that that just get real funky when they're forced into uh, into a desktop style environment. Um, because this isn't as as brutal uh, or as a significant a change in the standalone uh, a UI environment like we see from DeX or from uh, EMUI's desktop mode. Just a few apps don't know what to do with it. 
Exactly. And, then, and, uh, and as, you, as you're mentioning this, by the way, that's what I'm showing you guys on the left side right here. This is the uh, the desktop mode. It's connected over the setup that I have, so it looks really good. You're able to connect a mouse, a Bluetooth mouse, obviously, if you want. And it just scrolls very nicely. It works really good. Uh, and as you said, some applications are a little bit finicky. We have access to the app drawer. We can go through. Uh, so if you notice right there, so I, this is the Recents app. It's brought up some inf information here. I can go home. Um, and of course, I can open up Google Chrome. You can open up the gallery and look at some images here, of course, of some of the pics I've been playing. I've been confined to basically being home. So yeah, I do apologize. <laughs> All my pictures are of me in the backyard. Uh, and uh, let's go ahead and open up this one. This was just a quick macro shot this morning uh, as we don't have any rain, but we have a lot of nice dew on some of our mm -hmm. trees. And a little bit of reminiscence here of Christmas. If, if you're missing Christmas, it's there. Uh, just a few leaves left on my poinsettia uh, left on this in the backyard. But yeah. Uh, and of course, we could still do screen mirroring, which is standard wise, which we'll be able to switch over. And you can still use your mouse, uh, scroll down, open up the app drawer, you know, scroll, do everything you want. And of course, for me, I've been using obviously PowerDirector. Uh, I've been testing out some speeds on the SD card just to kind of get some speed readings there. And of course, Android gestures galore. So mm -hmm. very happy with that. And uh, I love the fact that it's also natively obviously able to share your screen. So you can share it over Chromecast, standard typical. And um, one thing I did want to actually mention that I didn't get, somebody mentioned in the comments in there and I did want to actually answer. Um, have you had any, uh, well, what's your thoughts actually on, on the button placement, uh, comparing it to some of the other devices that we've seen? We have five buttons, or sorry, four buttons on the device. Mm -hmm. uh, the volume rocker is on the left with a dedicated button for the assistant. And uh, we have the power button on the right side, obviously. And I feel like, I think it's, it's a good combination of placement. Uh, when I have it in the case, it's a little bit, you have to kind of remember where the button is. I always end up hitting the assistant first before I hit the volume. Yeah, but other than the, that, I think. the the It is, I think, maybe the clumsiest aspect of the V60 is uh, the, the buttons. I don't know that you'll be able to see that. I, I can't like... Uh, get that in any closer but uh, the the buttons here don't transfer directly through the case so you know when you get like a really good bumper case they've got like cutouts and ports so that the buttons click through here yeah. this just becomes a dead wall so that the buttons on your phone aren't actually pressed and then yeah. there's a, uh, there, there's other wiring so that these buttons activate so it looks a little funky because these buttons don't line up one to one but when you look at the hinges, when, when you look at the case design, it makes sense. It's a functional solution for mounting the hinges where you'd most want, you know, the durability of the screen to be maintained. But then that changes where the location is and your muscle memory for, for using these buttons as compared to when the phone is out of the case. It's LG. So a solution like that is totally engineered to be functional and responsive, and it's mm -hmm. a little bit clumsy in actual execution. <laughs> I, it's it for me. It's about about a twenty four hours or forty eight hours when you get that muscle memory, you kind of go back in to realize that you remember where the physical buttons are. And as I was kind of showing you guys, it's just for actually, those people that are going to be popping the phone in and out of the case more frequently. Yeah, you your buttons move, you know, they're, they're in a slightly different place when you're ergonomically, you know, when you're holding the phone and where you're used to one of uh, one of those buttons being. So I, I think that'll probably take anyone a couple days just to kind of get the feel for when the phone's in the case, it, you know, my fingers kind of move here when the phone's out of the case, it's slightly different. Um, those, exactly. those little things, those little things kind of matter. So they do, and and it's something that you have to keep in mind. But it, I don't think it's something that it should be. It's not a. I wouldn't necessarily say it's a deal breaker. I would say it's more of the. It happens with any device that you decide to purchase. If you if you're coming in new to a G a G60, well, the V60, the G9. Keep in mind, um, it's something that you have to always just be aware. Of. But I love the fact that we have a dedicated button that works perfectly great. Um, you were able to initiate the assistant very very quickly, very very fast. And right there, you can see it's spitting it out on the on the left side. Uh, but you're able to basically enjoy having the assistant and working very nicely. Yeah, uh, I did get a chance. I saw one uh, a comment in there also. Um, oh wow! <laughs> um, actually, I didn't get a chance to play with Android Auto, uh, partially because I I'm not driving around. Uh, yeah, we're not really still... doing as much car stuff as we. Would yeah, um, 
I, I, I would say this much. If you're, if you're looking forward, actually, what I will do is once we're done with the stream, I'll definitely jump into the car, fire it up, and see how it runs. Uh, the, the question was mostly specific into how does the adapter work with Android Auto? Because Android Auto obviously needs data to connectivity. So if data transfers um, and power transfers, but no, uh, as far as I remember, there's no video that transfers. I'm not sure if Auto, I'm just guessing at this point, I'm assuming Android Auto should I want to say it should work. It would be kind mm -hmm. of a design issue if it doesn't, because most people, if they decide to use it with the case, will need to connect it. Uh, so I, I'm not going to give a verdict, obviously, since I don't know. I don't have a way of testing it right away without literally having you know Juan Carlos do his thing and I run to the car and then come back. Um, <laughs> we'll do shuttle runs. You know? Okay. okay. Are, you, are, you, okay. are you in the car? Okay. I'll be right back. Okay. Yeah. 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 Juan, you take the show. I'll come back later. <laughs> So, uh, but I, I don't I actually, I imagine that it should work if, uh, if it doesn't and then that there's a design concern there, obviously. Uh, but I imagine, yes, uh, my only concern would be obviously is they only include one adapter. So just be careful. If you mm -hmm. lose it, it's not an easy replaceable piece. It's, I haven't seen a place where we're able to pick it up yet, at least not from T-Mobile site. Um, so I would imagine this would be a little bit of hard, uh, hard piece tech to actually yeah, get. The, the G8X adapter wasn't too difficult to pick up shortly after the phones launched. And if I remember That's, correctly, it also wasn't that expensive. So I no, they that. shouldn't. I look this out. Exactly. But the other thing you want to keep in mind, obviously, is you still have obviously wireless charging. And um, I think somebody was asking also during our live stream last time about possibly some challenges about mounting this in the car, right? This, I mean, especially if you're using it with a case. It's a big, heavy um, phone. It is a heavy phone. So obviously, magnetic mounting is going to be a challenge. Uh, but actually, just for the sake, obviously, of what we want to do today, I am going to show you guys a quick thing. And this one I will actually get off of uh, slightly out of... Uh, out of view, just to bring this uh, this guy over. Uh, these these adapters are called uh, the O Snap adapters. Uh, they're actually, if I'm not mistaken, I saw them at CES. They're a great little company that does basically magnetic connectors uh, that you're able to use on your device. And I've been using them um, on my uh, well, actually on my wife's uh, Note 10. So she's been enjoying it quite well. And uh, they do include actually a plate, a mounting plate that you're able to put in your car. But what I wanted to show you guys is how strong this. Oh, and I didn't mean to drop it. And if I'm able to get the magnet, you know, this is hashtag fail, hashtag Saturday morning, hashtag only. Nah. Not even a cup of coffee. But you could, sorry, here. So very nice. So I'll go ahead and open up this guy and uh, just to kind of show you guys how it works on the case because it is an issue for me if, if it doesn't work. So that, we'll go ahead and do a live installation, but we'll we'll go through from there. Um, Software software processes and some of the things that you've noticed uh, overall. Have you had any issues software wise on uh, as far as using the the V sixty? Uh, no, I mean the the things that I'm. So I, I shouldn't say no. I, I will actually say there have been a few lockups and a few little gremlins, but we're talking about trying to set up this phone and use it in some of the most aggressive ways possible. So I'm, I'm trying to split screen three Microsoft documents all at the same time. I'm trying to render video on one screen while I'm um, uh, streaming a video on another screen, or I'm trying to force a full screen view, sort of a mm -hmm. full tablet view for uh, content creation for video editing and rendering when the phone doesn't really support that. So when when I'm pushing it to that degree and I'm finding a couple little stumbles, hitches or gremlins there, um, I'm, I'm willing to kind of give the phone a bit of a pass because there's literally until the uh, surface until the surface duo comes out, there is no current spec Android device on the market today that resembles this. I mean, uh, the, the closest we can go back to is something like an Axon M with a Snapdragon mm -hmm. 821. So my my um my uh, uh, critiques or my concerns over some of the software performance are completely mitigated by the fact that I am not using this in any kind of regular fashion, um, that this is uh, above above and beyond what I think uh, anyone would expect from a phone. How's that looking? How's it feeling? So here we are. Let's go ahead and do full side. So first and foremost, uh, it, the case obviously has some thickness on its own. So overall, you guys could see exactly how this one fits. Uh, let's go ahead and do solo jump right there. So again, it's called O-Snap. It is a very nice, very flush. It doesn't add actually almost no thickness additional to the case. One cool thing about it is the actual piece itself in the back is slidable. So if you want to be able to use wireless charging on your device while it's in the case, since that works, 
this does come off. You can slide it down, slide it all the way back in, and now you have that magnetic piece that will work with the actual mount. So this has a 3M tape sitting on the back. I, I do apologize, the color is not the best. It's a white <laughs> background. This should have been a little bit uh, more designed there as far as you know, maybe matching the color of the, the plate. But the magnet is extremely strong. I mean, okay. this is the V60 with the case just sitting there and, you know, so it has should have no problem. It doesn't work as strong when you're going sideways. But of course, also as a plus here is you get, if you want it, <laughs> you get that. That's adorable. The, that is actually really cute. That is, that, that to me was like, when I saw this at CES, I was like, serious? You were able to get everything set up and of course, once everything is done, it goes back to flush. And again, this is removable. This entire piece is slidable. So if you have any problems, you can just replace it, get another one, and it works great. And again, it's called O-Snap. Um, it's available on Amazon. Uh, they do make some cases that have this integrated, but I think for the most part, all, all of those are iPhone-related cases. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's, that was originally why I approached them. I said, you know, do you make these for Android? I was mostly looking for my Pixel 4. And um, then they're like, no, we don't, but we sell the adapter separately. And they were kind kind enough to send me a few pieces. So uh, definitely check them out if you can if you're looking for something, even if not necessarily just for uh, you know for your V60. Hashtag not sponsored. Uh, it was nice of them to send me the samples. Just want to say that. Yeah, I'm I'm still not entirely. I mean, like I might I might look that up. I'm still not entirely sure what I'm gonna do with about V60 in my car because the little the little air conditioning vent mount that I use is yeah. not it's not gonna work with this no one. no and, and and it won't work with so this is definitely i mean it's a heavy guy but mm -hmm. it has so much functionality and so i, I do want to just transition a little bit more as far about the fact um we had a few people asking about the second display why do we have a notch when you don't have a camera what's going on with the displays um for me i love the way they did it. i love the symmetry of it I like the fact that they used the same panel. They used the same resolution. And we'll talk a little bit about the whole QHD situation and you know why, like, why don't we have a QHD display? Why don't we have a higher refresh rate? Those things are justified if you think about what you need them for. But with the way they did here, the system, the case, the device, the display, I feel like they did the right combo. I feel like this is a better implementation than what we saw with the V50. Not to say that that was a bad one, but they oh, made no. sure this is, the this experience is night and day better <laughs> than the, I like the dual the dual screen case on the V50, but my V50 spends a lot of its time out of that case. Where on the V60, I'm trying to find more solutions to just keep it in the case because I like mm -hmm. that. I, I like the experience a lot better. Yeah, and, and I like the fact that they use the exact same panel. It's it's literally as if they just took a display from the V60 and they put it on a second on the second screen. Um Oh man, I like okay. So I'll get to your question, Sonic, in, in a little bit. But overall, as far as gaming, playback, content creation, um, having the same color temperature, having the same calibration done on both displays is always, uh, I, and you don't realize it till you see it. Obviously, when you have the same display, it's appreciated and it's very nice, and you don't have to worry about bending it. So for me, I love, I like the display. Uh, should they have removed the notch from the second one? Honestly, we're not missing much in that part of the display anyway. It's not like it's yeah. sitting in the middle. So you're not missing anything. Uh, your notifications are still coming on the main display, so you're not going to lose it there. Um, and I think for symmetry, it looks fine. And it doesn't, for me, at least it doesn't, it's not a concern or an issue. And after a couple of days, or actually not even, after a few hours of using it, you stop seeing the notch. It's not something that your eye will gravitate to, even when you're watching video. So I, I still so. think notches are hideous, so I'm not going <laughs> to... I, I'm not I'm not going to tell someone they're wrong if they're they're leaving. Oh, I just can't handle a notch. But if you're saying like, oh, I just can't handle a notch. But you think a hole punch is somehow so much better. I'm I, I don't think it's that much different. As soon as you disrupt the display, you've disrupted the display. Um, but but this uh, this this is the thing. I mean, like. It, this it's not hard to to do the math on this one. And I'm mm -hmm. really frustrated with the 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 tech enthusiasts who are per, are going out of their way to not understand that we're looking at a phone that's trying to reach a certain price point. Now, how many times have we heard LGs need to compete better on price? Okay, well, if we make a pivot, then we're we're looking at 1080p displays, but you're exactly. getting two 1080p displays. Dose, you're getting. 
twice as much screen real estate for a phone that's a hundred dollars cheaper than a 64 gigabyte smaller base model iPhone 11 Pro. And it's a 5G phone. So if you want LG to be able to execute this, and we're talking about a company that is that is making some very aggressive pivots on trying to get their phone division out of the red, we're looking at matched displays. We're looking exactly. at um, making sure that that assembly, that the manufacturing on that isn't ridiculous. So you can't make two completely different screens just to enable a notchless accessory. You make exactly the same panel in duplicate, and that's gonna be a much more cost-effective way to enable that. I'm, I have no doubts that LG could totally deliver uh, you know, a 4K, you know, 120 Hertz refresh rate OLED. You would just have a $3,000 phone, and no one would buy a $3,000 phone from LG. So when we put all these pieces together, this is really easy to understand. But that also means that we gotta have to we have to have that conversation with what people really want and what what people really need. There are gonna be some folks yeah. out there who just won't be able to walk away from ninety hertz. I totally get that. But we've got a phone here which is so beastly powerful for ten eighty p sixty hertz that the 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 re the frame rate never drops. If you're playing a game, it, it is sixty hertz gaming pegged sixty frames per second, and you'll never see that dip. Um, and then if you want to do more on a phone, this is, I think, one of the best arguments I've seen yet for some really aggressive multitasking. If folks are out there saying, well, why do I need to do that much on your phone? I'm going to say you're probably ha fine with a $400 mid-ranger. And I'm not saying that to be snarky. I'm saying this is a, a this this is a tank, a diesel truck tank of a phone. So if you don't have those kinds of considerations or you don't have that that need for that kind of usage, yeah go go get go get a qualcomm 700 series it's, oh yeah it, it's going to get you through the day and it's going to get you through the day beautifully well for less than half the price of an s20 or an iphone 11 pro or this and you're still um, able to get 5g as well the the 700 series does exactly. yeah there is a 5g variant of that that actually you're not going to be compromising i mean from from my experiences using the 600 series and the pixel 3a there mm -hmm. is very little, if we're really talking about average consumers and average users, mm -hmm. there's almost nothing the Pixel 3a can't do in getting someone through their day, having a great camera experience, having reasonable battery life. It's a smaller form factor screen if you're caring about like these monster devices getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Um, exactly. $400 full retail when that thing launched. And it felt like any other premium phone when we're talking about social media and messaging and communications and you know having a good camera experience. So again, we we need to have like a, a, a more stratified conversation when we're talking about eight hundred dollars and up. And it needs to be more like laptops. You know, you, you don't just say, "Well, there's one kind of laptop. It's a laptop, and that's a laptop, and that's the only laptop people should be able to buy." We recognize that there are durable laptops and workstation laptops and super thin light laptops and gaming laptops. This is what we need for phones if phones are going to continue to be competitive and exciting. And speaking of laptops, before we go too far, make sure you check out uh, Juan Carlos's uh, live stream from yesterday. He actually did get a chance to show us a couple of new laptops ah! from Newegg. So nice little uh, segue there. Uh, not that I, yeah, I didn't get a chance to jump on it when it was live, but I did check it out after. And it, it actually is some nice options. And uh, also some, uh, I think, was it 20, 2070 GT, uh, GTX? No, um, you were talking ray tracing and the 2070 and the 2060, I think. At the oh, yeah. When you were talking. So, so, I mean, the, the, the movement we made on that, some pretty exciting stuff. Um, I, I didn't get to show much of that <laughs> in my live stream. I was literally taking a 2070 out of a box. Um, I know. Yeah, it, it's 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 getting real. It's getting real good out there if we're talking De about sort of the upper mid range of GPUs. Definitely. And uh, so overall, I think the way that you want to look at it is this this device has a lot of powerful components built into it and it's always been well i was going to say is that the the approach that we're seeing here is very focused on uh creators content creation content consumption uh the audio on this which i want to segue to as well in just a second uh not just headphone jack but also the quality of the speakers that we have here 
um, have definitely been stepped up from what we've seen in the past. Um, also, we have four microphones now for the cameras on the back, not three the way we saw them last year. So uh, a few new audio modes as, uh, as well in the in the camera itself. Um, did want to answer a couple of questions here real quick. Uh, there is a comment that I saw originally that for somebody that was talking about the, uh, I guess it's called the screen, uh, the screen capture tool that we have now that was built into the notification panel. Uh, the quick memo, uh, or even the, that little option here, the screen capturing. Uh, of course, that is too too small. Let's go ahead and do it right here. I so mean, when you do this, you might want to full sc full screen your video just so that. Yeah, let's do that real quick here. Boom. I mean, don't get and... me wrong. I'm I'm gorgeous to look at too, but I'm just looking at you doing this, so it's probably not as necessary. So what most people were asking it was specifically this functionality, which it looks like it's a pen that gives us the ability, of basically like writing on it. And they're asking is is there pen support on the V60. Uh, currently, not, not really. I mean, uh, what we're talking about here is essentially um, editing tool for your, you know, screen capture. So they just they chose. This is what's confusing: is if we look up the spec sheet on the Korean website, it does mm -hmm. list AES compatibility for stylus, so for pressure sensitivity and uh, um, compatibility. And I don't think I've got any proper styli. You know, the, all of the styluses that I have are from like sort of proprietary solutions, like the Lenovo's that I've got. Or and, and same thing for me. I have the uh, Huawei ones for the MediaPad. Yeah, exactly. The um, I, I think I've got it. No, it's over there because Lex is using that as an art tablet now. Um, uh, th those aren't compatible. And the 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 Wacom that I have is basically just a simple um powered fine point stylus but it doesn't it doesn't track pressure so i'm i'm looking into what might be compatible i should probably mm -hmm. just have a bamboo you know in in office anyway and i'm hoping that we'll get like some sort of clearer answer from lg the the, I was the, gonna say the ui have, at least doesn't show it yeah because i was going to say i didn't see any options for it so that's why i was yeah. wondering if even if it's in there would it be available as far as it you know it didn't seem or, like or it I mean, was even if yeah. we were just able to fire up a, a graphics app that tracked pressure sensitivity, is this something that's really going to be enabled? The concern I have, because we've seen LG do stuff like this in the past, is mm -hmm. maybe this is an, a, an additional feature that isn't going to make it to international variants of Quite possible, the G60. Yeah. You know, like when the G6 launched and it had quad DAC and wireless charging in different markets, you know. Um, so I'm, I'm hoping that this is something that they just built in into the phone and that's just the way the phone was built and we'll see if we can get note style um stylus compatibility but um but in the meantime what what actually has been kind of cool like for my i thought i had it over here and now i don't know where it went but my little uh bamboo stylus this is like mm -hmm. the smoothest implementation on the screen where uh this there it is this little uh, this little styli can get very choppy or broken on a lot of mm -hmm. screens, and the V60 is tracking this better than I've seen on any other phone. So Perfect. whatever they've done to the display is at least enabling this better. But my my version, this is the cheapest version of the bamboo, doesn't have support for pressure sensitivity, so I can't test that. Yeah, no, no. So hopefully we'll be able to see that. But to kind of answer the question, because I saw that one a little bit back uh, as far as what we see there. And this device is obviously very, very nice for vlogging, mostly because of the camera setup, as well as the well, let's talk a little bit more about the microphones. So sure. uh, first and foremost, four microphones present on the device, which enable two functionalities, one functionality, and I'll get a chance to jump over here. If we open up the camera application, we'll go into the camera and we'll switch over to the whole one person thing again, I will jump into video, sorry, video mode. We'll notice that there is a little microphone present at the bottom. When you click that, you have three different modes. You have the standard mode, which is the basic uh, microphones, obviously just pointing towards the subject and they're focusing on them. Second mode is ASMR mode, which is Juan Carlos's favorite mode. If you guys like that, make sure to, <laughs> oh, so gross. once you get the phone, record as many clips with this and send it to him. Uh, <laughs> but essentially it's, it's, <laughs> I had to do that. I, I had to. <laughs> no, uh, I kid. I kid. Uh, if you're in, if you enjoy ASMR and you'd like to be able to use your uh, your device to be able to record ASMR content, they have a direct ASMR mode. I haven't had a chance to play much with this. I've been actually mostly living in the bokeh area, 
And uh, the intention behind this is, is intentionally providing us a, a focus level on the subject of your video. So whomever you're re recording uh, ends up basically being in the center with a, a audio processing to dampen the background noise to, to basically give you subject isolation the way we get with bokeh video or bokeh mm -hmm. uh, images. Uh, but it's they're trying to use software optimization. So it's no different than just basically isolating you um, it has improved. It has improved quite a bit since the first video that I did for you guys. I think it was a couple of weeks ago. Uh, yeah. We were with pre-production software. Um, although we didn't get any, I didn't get any updates. I don't, I don't know if you saw any updates on yours uh, since I haven't today, seen any, no. I'm, 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 I'm assuming that we'll probably see like maybe a little patch update or at in least a week even or so. just like a carrier update um, in, yeah. in about a week. Yeah. It's usually what happens. It's about a week or so later. And um Overall, audio has been good. Uh, video has been great, uh, but the bokeh functionality, I feel like it works great. It does reduce the audio in the background. It provides you that nice isolation for the subject. And what you get there essentially is just a much better, um, I feel like just, again, like I said, it, it, the better isolation for your subject. It works both on the front facing and the back facing cameras. Although I feel like it probably was meant more to work on the back cameras as one mm -hmm. of the microphones positioned back there. So yeah. where with the front facing one, you're relying more on the side uh, microphones. So you're kind of losing one of them, but it's available. I like it. Uh, I don't know how, if you've had a chance to play around with it yet, or have you tested that? I, I haven't out? dug into the, uh, into the fun modes yet. I, I was shooting just a couple, um, uh, just a couple of video samples using sort of the uh, the the stock audio settings for the manual video. I'm a the, little yeah, concerned. that's again in the manual side. Yeah, yeah, I, I'm a little concerned that we might be hearing slightly heavier noise reduction on the V60 mm -hmm. than what we did on the V50. But my testing is way off because I'm not going to my normal spots. I'm not driving around. And yesterday was kind of rainy and windy. So if the phone is trying to pull back on wind noise, I think that's that's appropriate. It's just I'm mm. I'm used to comparing it against very similar setups because I've been shooting the same locations for these camera tests for almost six years. <laughs> like this is going to be the first phone. Like I want to dig in deep, but I'm 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 you know trying to abide by these like you know you know quarantine at home uh, protocols. So uh, the uh, the so far it's been very very good. Camera performance has been great. The audio performance has been uh, audio playback performance has been fantastic. The audio mm -hmm. um, uh, the speaker performance has been really good. It, oh man, uh, speakers really nice. I quite. I, I mean, I, I would give I would give the ROG the nod for power. Like I think mm -hmm. the ROG's output is louder, but LG is giving us a nice balance of output to uh, to clarity. Um, like this is the first LG where I feel like we're, we're in good company against like Razer phone two or some of those oh, classic, yes. uh, HTC do, um, proper stereo speaker phones. Well, um, and also those devices are front facing, right? So we want to keep yeah. that in mind that th those actually have a front facing experience on both the front, uh, the speakers are both front facing, which when you were mentioning the ROG phone. definitely doing an unmatched dual speaker, but yeah. Like Samsung, like I think Samsung got did this well last year, and I, I haven't listened as as much as I should have on the V on on the S twenty, um, but it's balancing unequal speakers is a very difficult audio task, and LG did not do that well um, on the V fifty. I think they've mm -hmm. done that much better here. And audio levels are definitely very nice. You're able to get, there's also some built-in EQs that you're able to tune the audio on the speakers as well as the headphones. So um, audio control here on this device is, I, I would say like the best way you can ever imagine. I'm not saying it has, it doesn't actually show Dolby. So the, the technology that we was looking here, they're basically branding it as LG. Mm -hmm. um, so there's the LG 3D uh, engine and there's some audio tuning there. And then, of course, my favorite part, which I feel bad now because I'm actually using the headphones, so I can't turn it on on mine. Um, it's the DTS uh, quad back functionality that you get the moment you plug in wired headphones. Yep. Wired headphones. And we're talking about, uh, so I think we had somebody ask us a couple of days ago, does it have any problems driving the 280 ohms uh, headphones that we have here with the 770s? Absolutely no. not. No, Easy peasy. No. No, I, honestly, I, like I said, my only challenge has been is that I don't have an adapter to use it with a case. That's it, because I, you know, I want to keep it in the case. But honestly, 
uh, taking it out, just listening to content, uh, listening to really good music, listening to some really good like orchestra style music, uh, instrumental music, uh, and even actually just regular, you know, if you want to listen to dance, pop and so on, this is going to perform to the level that you want because you can also fine tune it. There's some additional tuning in there that you're able to set up as far as the audio balance, uh, the built-in EQ that actually can, you can disable the standard LG EQ and go into the DTS settings to set, to get the audio to play exactly the way you want it. So, um, I do recommend you picking up a nice pair of headphones, in-ear or over-ear, preferably, uh, to enjoy the music on on the device like this, especially if you are an audiophile and you're able to get some nice FLAC files. Uh, this is definitely not going to disappoint. This is the device to use that with. So, Oh, absolutely. Uh, yeah. No, uh, so I've been I've been trying to... I, I'm, sadly, I don't have any, any good audiophiles to, to be able to share, but mostly uh, streaming content, even with some of my local stuff that I've had, uh, using them have been just amazing. I haven't, I had, there's no way to say any bad things, uh, even though we have the massive compression with audio when you, when you go streaming and stuff. Uh, but, uh, as far as audio for you, have you, what's the, what, what type of testing have you been working with as far as, oh, uh, you know, yeah, I've, I've comparison. already done most of my, uh, you know, my, and, uh, my analytics bench. So, uh, you know, getting the noise floor measurements, getting the, uh, the peak output, the amp outputs. Um, the, the, the one surprising thing is I, this is also coming at a time where I think Qualcomm has improved the mm -hmm. standard DAC that comes included on Snapdragon chipsets. Um, so the differences between quad DAC low amp and the Qualcomm DAC are are closer than ever. But once you plug in something over 50 ohms, um, the differences between quad DAC low amp and quad DAC high amp are pretty surprising. Um, I, I don't believe that this is the newer Sabre chip. I know a lot of people were asking if it, this was the newer DAC from ESS. And, and some just everything that 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 kind of points to LG's design here is where can they still offer up a premium experience but keep costs in check? So going with a brand new you know uh, audio processing unit from ESS probably would have raised the price on a feature that a lot of popular YouTubers are saying, oh, uh, you don't need cables anymore. And it's it's frustrating because um, LG has basically just been competing with themselves since the V20. Mm -hmm. Like literally nothing is touching the V uh, the V20 on, and the V60 still manages to represent improvement over the V50. So even Absolutely. though it's not the newest chip, even though it's not the newest uh, uh, um, signal processor from from ESS, um, I'm trying to remember what is that called? Uh, the, the converter um, from okay. from ESS. Uh, it's still tuned and an improvement in a couple of surprising ways over over the v50 so i'm going to have a full audio deep dive those are those are my some of my patreon videos um, please please make sure want... to make sure you guys yeah if you haven't subscribed to, to juan carlos yet make sure to check him out his information is in the links below uh and of course support the channel uh he is he is known this this is literally the bread and butter of Juan Carlos of the deep dives uh, and and I know a lot of us love them a lot of them uh, a lot of us follow him and always wait for his deep dives be it, be, be it the cameras uh, configure you know setup testing and uh, of course the audio setup which I really yeah. appreciate so so, so. It, it, so if if you want to see some of those graphs and stuff that's what the videos are for but you know short story long I can at least say um, for headphone performance we're were improved. I mean, LG is still managing to find little tweaks and and um, and ways to kind of clean up this software processing and this hardware processing, and it, it's still the the king of the hill. Uh, it, it's been crazy watching from V40 to uh, to V50 to G8X. You know, tiny little improvements, tiny little tweaks, and and some of this is now at a point where it's placebo. You know, like I can scientifically measure this stuff. I'm not entirely sure dogs would be able to hear the improvements, but LG is still iterating and improving on all of this setup. And I think that's, I, I think that's worth commenting on. I think that's, that's a worthwhile uh, um, perk to mention when we talk about an LG device. It's, it's not just LG resting on the V20 DAC. It is mm -hmm. the same, uh, uh, the same uh, ESS chip, but what they've done to complement and to improve the entire signal path of audio from that headphone jack has has improved significantly. So I, I do want to do a quick uh, circle back because actually one of the comments did point out uh, that there actually is a setting for the pen, which I just 
didn't realize. Oh, did I, you find it? Yeah, no, no. Um, so let's go ahead and switch over to. Oh, no, no, you guys see? Uh, so you guys could definitely see that. If uh, you look through the settings options, you can kind of see it right there. It's basically the pen shortcut, and it looks like the pen will have a dual functionality setup. Um, it is touch sensitive, so press A, press hold A and B. Uh, so uh, oh. yeah, we need to get that pen. What is this? I. What is this? So pen? I yeah no. Uh, so it just I ended up having to basically just seriously just looking up because I didn't look for the word pen. I was looking for the shortcuts, and you can see that I, I searched pen for shortcut. the word stylus, and of course, and I, I did the same thing. Uh, but uh, thank you very much. I do want to. I want to thank. Actually, I want to see here. Where is it? I kind of missed the setting. Uh, oh, here. Uh, so uh, I want to say thank you to um, Shellfire sixty four. Thank you very. Yeah, appreciate the the comment, and I I'm happy I was able to see that. Uh, it is in the settings. It's available, uh, and you'd be able to basically just configure it, uh, customize the the functionality. Just go into pen key shortcuts. So it looks like the stylus will have two buttons, uh, and it also looks like it's going to have some additional functionality of basically, you know, single press and press and hold. So, looking forward to seeing that. I haven't heard any word from any carrier, or at least, um, or even from LG, which I'll actually be asking right now as soon as we're done uh, yeah this is the only when, way i mean it's going to be v60 and surface duo if you want a dual screen or a foldable phone with stylus support we're, we're probably not going to get that from samsung this year no no well i and so for me this is a very nice find i do appreciate it. again thank you very much uh for for commenting on that and letting us know it is in the settings i don't know why i didn't think of looking for the word pen i thought stylus was the thing <laughs> <laughs> but I don't know. I know it's it's a it's a thing. Uh, We're just way too clever for our own good. That's that's ex <laughs> yes, yes, and 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 maybe 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 and only maybe we need more than twenty four hours to know everything, right? Because we know everything, and that's how we do it. Um, I do want to jump real quick to. Uh, okay, so I'm gonna actually let you read his name because I, I every time I try to st read Steve's last name, I always mess it up. Steve DeRoach. Okay. Yep. Our buddy Steve, uh, thank you for uh, doing the super chat. I appreciate that. And of course, uh, this actually brings us back to that conversation since we're talking audio. Um, I do want to mention, I do want to talk to you a little bit about the whole boombox, the G7, okay. and of course, where we are with the V60. Mm -hmm. So I don't have my G7. Sadly, I don't have a way of doing a straight comparison. I do know that you love the. Oh, yeah. You were very, you were very. Uh, I'll take one step back. Uh, both of us enjoy the the, the boombox functionality. We've seen the evolution of boombox with different G8, uh, G series devices, and the way the way that basically LG's provided us the the sound capability of amplification. We have the the sound chamber in the back, the resonance, and the ability to basically just mm -hmm. basically make anybody that ever thought a phone can get loud by just putting it on a flat surface or even on a box. Just that look on their face is like, what this thing like so. What are your thoughts as far as uh, Boombox G7 V C V60, and then we'll also talk about possibly you know futures for that. Um, Boombox became less and less valuable. Um, how do I, how do I want to phrase this? Uh, Boombox as a feature kind of was already beginning to be devalued. If you put a the wrong kind of case on your phone, it would absorb what that resonance chamber was kind of putting out. And and also I feel like LG kind of stepped back boombox a little. I was a little frustrated by this. I think they got like negative, you know, they got complaints about how the phone feels in the hand. You know, that's a very valuable tech commentary is how does it feel in the hand? Um, but, but I know like G8 is technically a boombox capable phone. The boombox effect is not as pronounced on the G8 as it was on the G7, and so when we get through to the to the V40 and to the V50, if you're going to employ any kind of dual speaker or stereo speaker setup, uh, boombox becomes a lot less uh, a lot it becomes a lot harder to implement if you're trying to build resonance chambers for both, and if you're not, then the earpiece yeah. speaker is contributing very little to the overall stereo or dual audio effect. So if you listen on the V50, you can hear that something is coming out of the earpiece, but when you hold it at arm's, at arm's length, it's barely contributing. So when we get to V60, and one of the key features of V60 is you gotta put a case on it, and that case has a lot of mass and is, is there to employ a second screen, you've automatically reduced the effectiveness of boombox so 
I think it was the right play to just walk away, go with a better dual speaker arrangement, much better representation for stereo audio, better complementing what's going on for the screen. Because when you're holding the V60 is like a gaming device, especially mm -hmm. the dual screen in the case on the back, um, you really want that stereo audio. You're not going to be putting the phone down. You know, you're not going to get the effect of boombox anyway. So uh, it, it, it's every, everything should always be discussed as sort of the pros and cons. You know, we don't get this great room filling audio feature anymore that we had on the G7, but it has improved, I think, one of the core usage scenarios of using the phone in your hand. So I, I understand. I'm sad to see it go. I would love to see like what could a what could a V series phone with dual speakers and a larger resonance chamber achieve if I really wanted to fill a room with some sound? But uh, you know, I've got some decent Bluetooth speakers, so I'll just I'll just have to run with that instead, I guess. So yeah, definitely. Uh, I personally. For for me, at least on the G series, I ended up having to use more Bluetooth because of the stereo. When I was uh, whenever I was playing games, and there's always going to be the debate of obviously Bluetooth headphones and the latency, and that even if they're getting better, which on 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 mobile gaming is always the wrong answer. Yeah, no, but I mean, again, with with the uh, with the <laughs> hey, let me just tell you, it's the fact, fact of the matter. I'm just, I'm just putting my foot down. If I mean, if you maybe you don't care about gaming, maybe you you are not. casual and you're you don't know what's going on. But if you're gaming Bluetooth on a mobile device, it's the worst. So you can just take it from me. That's next video point. we're gonna play. By the way, we're gonna be doing thumper Smash challenge like between God. you and me. <laughs> you and I will do will will do thumper head to head gaming straight 45 minutes of just playing there and obviously i'll get decimated I there i'd love to co-stream like see how far we could get with Thumper. yeah, yeah. so guys make sure you comment below let us know if you'd like to see a thumper challenge going between myself and and Juan carlos uh just to make sure that he can uh show how well just as also for for reference uh, thank you steve appreciate it uh the the, uh, the super chat but you actually turn uh, you know turn me on obviously to um uh, what's it called? <laughs> yes, Steve actually even uh, sounds your uh, your opinion. Of course, do not let your friends play Thumper with Bluetooth. It wasn't. I wasn't playing Thumper. It was more uh, for when I was playing like PUBG. I needed to have that spatial awareness. The sound coming in just from one speaker on the G7 was not working for me. And um, obviously, wired headphones are always going to be the best situation. Bluetooth is never going to be, in my opinion, at least up to par yet. It's getting better, and it is getting better with every new update. Uh, but wired headphones, and of course, if you have this DAC, you got to use it. Just use it mm -hmm. and enjoy it. Well, but the stereo I, speakers... Have, and I, and I love that good. conversation, too. Like, oh, Bluetooth's getting better. It's just way more expensive than plugging in a good gaming headset. But exactly. that's fine. It's fine. You know, it, it, it's, it's getting there. But but spend more money now, and, and it's fine. But it's not fine. But it's fine. So no, I'm, I'm not about that. If you really it, want to it, do it right, do it right. You do. And and you have the hardware, which is actually, <laughs> if we think about it, outside of seeing what Sony's doing, which is hopefully in the next iteration of the Sony, I think it was the Xperia 1 Mach yeah. 2, which is not out yet. So that's why we don't have a way of referencing I, yet. I love um, seeing some companies come to their senses and bring back this hardware. Bring Exactly. Bring it back. There is no reason for it to go, especially when you have space. I mean, 6.8 inches, this is a big guy. Even with a 5,000 milliamp hour battery, they were still able to keep the DAC. Um, so for me, I appreciate that. I'm sad to see that the boombox effect is gone, but having the stereo speakers at the levels that they're able to play are very nice. You're able to tune them to the level that you want. So audio-wise, I think the V60 is a very good performer so far from what I've seen. I haven't had like an extended amount, uh, but gaming for me right now, I haven't had a chance to, I have not been, well, I haven't used wired headphones with it yet. I'm enjoying the stereo speakers while I'm playing games. Honestly, works great. Uh, and mostly because I don't have the adapter because I, I want to be able to use the controller. That's literally the, the reason why yeah. I want to get the controller. But to get that with the wired is is just not happening for me. So um, unless I go to maybe some you know regular headphones, but I definitely want to enjoy the audio. So, yeah, uh, on, gaming I, I, on the I found I found a decent three pin. I'm not sure how it'll play with um with your just 770s. A dual. But uh, let me I'll, I'll send this link over to you here. Um, so it's a four foot. Uh, adapter, so it'll also give you just a little bit of extra reach, and um, oh, good, it's got a nice, a really nice braided cable on it. So I think this should do well with the uh, the V60. 
Good, good, good. I'll get a chance to check that out. And um, I do want to say thanks again for everybody's comment and everything going on. So video wise for me, I've been playing mostly in 4K 60 land. I've taken a few samples of uh, 8K video, mostly because I want to see uh, just the performance, obviously, how, to, how does it actually handle things? Um, and of course, how uh, I'm assuming you're also in 4K 60 mostly, or are you, are you trying to do oh, also yeah. no, focusing I, so on the 8K? I, I went out yesterday and I shot some 8K samples. Mm -hmm. I, I'm just a frame rate snob. I, I, I've been trying to run into 4K 60 as hard as I could. The cameras that I'm shooting my content on, my little Panasonic cameras I picked for 4K video. And uh, I really do like high frame rate. You know, I look at videos of my daughter at high, yeah. high frame rate, high resolution, and just like, these, this is how I want to capture those memories documentary style. Um, I appreciate it. Yeah. So, so 8K is interesting it's real big video and there's mm -hmm. a clarity when when you look at 8k video from a phone on a 4k monitor you get you know color subsampling that's very similar to looking at 4k video on a 1080p monitor it's almost like you get real 4k video by shooting 8k if that makes sense to people who know more about color compression and stuff like that so clarity and detail, th there is something real, real sharp um, popping up um, about that. But we're also at a point where it's not like 4K video looked bad. You know, 4K video on a 4K display was looking pretty good. So the 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 issue of, of dropping down to that, it, LG says it's a 26 frame per second 8K video to give you a little bit of a buffer to make sure you never dip below 24 frames per second. Exactly. Yep. I, I have to give LG some credit where compared to the samples and the little bit of time I've spent with the Galaxy S20, their implementation of 4K video seems to be a little bit smoother. The stabilization seems to be a little bit better. And mm -hmm. um, I'm not seeing the same kind of dips or drops. Um, I have a couple friends in my Discord that have shared some clips from their Galaxy S20s shooting 8K. And the video seems to be choppier, where the Samsung seems to be dropping more frames and is struggling to kind of keep up that consistent frame rate. I'm doing walking videos with great stabilization on the V60. It's just, I think I'd rather balance that out with a lower resolution video and a faster frame rate. And that to me, I think would look better overall. And uh, we're <laughs> in the middle of that last piece, both of us kind of went uh, circle around kind of thing. Oh, yeah. Uh, but we're, we're back. <laughs> You know, so just for consistency. I don't, I don't know what, what, what people lost there. I, I didn't even notice that we 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 futzed out. Oh, uh, TK just went circle lock on me too. Yeah, but I we're we're back. Uh, but what I did want to show you guys real quick here on my side is um, uh, one of the test things. Obviously, we, there'll be more in our, our dedicated videos. But let me go ahead and zoom in a little bit. To this this was an 8K shot video on the phone in the back in. Again, as I said, I'm stuck in my backyard, can't go far. Um, and uh, the file size, basically a one minute video clip is about 365 megabytes. So just to kind of keep in mind the file size. And uh, we're gonna go ahead and use uh, Google stabilization. This is uh, one of my favorite ways of actually seeing the performance of the SOC and how it is handled. Typically I've always done it on 4K 30, 4K 60 in some devices, but this is my first running on an 8K 24 frames per second stabilization. and. Um, Mostly, I'm going to try to see if I, there's a way to get a timer running without losing it. So I don't know if you want to give me a second here. So we'll do a live quick stabilization just to show you guys a performance, uh, just how it works, as well as how things are going. So here, stopwatch. I'll go ahead and put the stopwatch right there. And uh, we'll go ahead and start both. And we can go ahead and keep talking. So let's go ahead and hit stabilize. I'll give it a second. But yeah, you, mean you uh, didn't run the stopwatch on your second screen so you could stopwatch on the same device. Whoa. Uh, no, this what? is this is oh. to see how fast it can do it. <laughs> so we don't want to run something extra on the phone. Um, I, I, I can screen share this because I've got a couple of my little clips. I don't know if this is going to get weird, though. I'm sorry. Give me one second. I, yeah, yeah, no, no, no problem. So um, overall, you notice actually starting the pickup speed. And uh, this is, again, just running in 8K, 20, what? There's no only 24 frames per second. It's not like we could have changed it. Uh, and it's just stabilizing a quick footage video, me walking around the backyard, just handheld, obviously, no gimbal. And uh, obviously shot in the wrong uh, aspect, but <laughs> I should have gone uh, landscape. Uh, it's actually doing not too bad. We'll see is how that, it is. Does That's that look like better on my side? 
It does look well, a lot better. Yes. Okay. So I mean, it, yeah, uh, lens, it doesn't it cut off the top be, actually. We can yeah, see it doesn't seem to cut screen. off the top. So uh, just just for uh, we we were we were kind of all sharing some some samples from different phones uh, in, in terms of zoom. Uh, mm -hmm. This is a dim indoor lighting uh, shot. And just, here we are you know, sitting on my couch. Mm -hmm. Wow! Did that in a minute eleven? Yeah, it literally. Wow. Uh, in eight K stabilization, straight. Wow, that's actually really good. That's I mean, it's a little over a minute, but it's 8K. 4K was actually around 30 to 40 seconds for me. So, uh, so, and just real quick on my side. So this is me sitting on my couch, just shooting kind of dim indoor lighting. And then mm -hmm. um, this is what full 10X zoom looks like sitting from the same spot. So if we mm -hmm. were concerned about the zoom performance, I feel like this is a little smudgy. Like you can see how this is kind of blown up, but for 10X zoom, I feel like that's still perfectly usable. And then uh, this is my 8K. Is this the one? No, I think this is the one. Let me see if this is the one. I might not do this well over a stream. I, I was going to say, oh, not that bad. Uh, so nope. you're, th this is, I mean, again, you're, you're looking at this over a stream, but this is 8K video playing through my HDMI adapter. Um, and through the stream, through YouTube, yeah. through and so, back to you. So, so. Let, let, I wouldn't say you know you're looking at the 720p version of an 8K video, <laughs> but I was I was pretty impressed. Like there aren't, I I can't see any significant dropped frames. The stabilization, it's still the software stabilization stack is still um smoothing out video and footfalls. And then the uh, mm -hmm. the final video size, even though it's huge, um we are talking about H.265. So it's actually smaller video than 4K 60 um when, when you compare h.265 to h.264 so exactly uh, on the whole i mean a lot of this uh the the what makes a a v series phone unique what makes a v series phone a v series phone that the dna of that is is alive and well this this still feels like it's going to be an, an absolute performance uh production monster device for getting uh, content created I definitely agree. Yeah, no, and overall, haven't had any issues, at least about a day worth of usage. So uh, it's a little too early to actually call it, but I would definitely say from what I've seen and what I've experienced, at least, I think uh, if you're a, if you've used an LG device from before, you're familiar with the uh, the UI, uh, the UI actually seems a little bit lighter. I'm surprised, actually, it doesn't feel as, um, it's not as much of a, I would say, if you had any concerns in the past, the way LG's implementation about my only thing I would say is I wish we had a swipe down to open notification. Uh, but that one actually, you know, it, it's reasonable. I think uh, the, the search option is is still functional. Uh, there's no reason why you cannot install a secondary launcher. Just be aware it only installs on the main display. It does not yeah. install on both displays. I'm really so, hoping that that's uh, like Nova Launcher and Microsoft Launcher start looking at folding phones in dual screen with some yeah. other way to augment that. I wonder if the Microsoft Launcher is going to better enable dual screen support because once if they yes do, then that might be something we can benefit from on lg um, exactly i know their recent their recent updates to microsoft office to enable dual screen support i mean really really in anticipation of the yeah exactly yeah and and you can use it right now on lg dual screen devices so i'm, I'm fingers crossed microsoft launcher is actually pretty solid i i still prefer nova for my single screen phones but if they can give me some kind of control over both of these panels that would be that would be an, a nice perk definitely and and i think it's uh, so just because i think one of uh, was it uh, i think it was a fa fat produce i mentioned it last time uh is can we install uh, install it and run it on and then it works actually it seems like it's pretty good uh as far as the overall performance no issues, no concerns. Uh, so far, I'm, I've been basically testing it with games. I've been testing it with obviously mm -hmm. video stabilizations, rendering, uh, content creation, trying to actually do a video entirely based on this. So it not just the way I did the one initially where I did the, uh, the hands-on, I recorded everything on a V60. Uh, this time I just want to do a proper V60 video, but using the V60 uh, with external hardware if I uh, for audio, depending mm -hmm. on the environment that I'm in, but also using it obviously with the built-in pro mode within video, which gives us the ability of controlling audio a lot more than just having the presets uh, in the auto mode. So the ones I showed you guys before were mostly auto mode specific areas. So the three different ones. Um, I do want to say that I thought there was a fourth option in the hands-on when we did our video last time, but I only saw two this time. 
I don't know if you remember back then. Um, hold was on. there more? Actually, I think I have that clip. If I mean, if you keep talking, I'll, I'll pull it up just yeah, in yeah. my archive here. Uh, so battery size, uh, battery as far as performance, uh, charging is pretty fast. Uh, the the twenty five watt charger actually does a pretty good job there. Uh, the case itself is definitely, I was in my opinion, a must uh, if you want to be able to get the most out of this device. And as we probably, as you guys probably already saw, there is actually pen support. This is something that we were not aware of. They didn't, we didn't get a chance to see it again in the in the all of the twenty four hours or so. Or, sorry, thirty three hours and change. Actually, no, thirty five hours and change now since we're close to two hours. You know. So uh, I, I see they're they're in the sound. You're saying the the microphone settings. Yeah, yeah. Was it more than two? So ASMR and so, bokeh. Was it? So what they had was a basic mode. So you, uh, the basic you would mode tell is still there. Like, that it was just oh. basic, and then they also had a 3D surround. That's what it was. Okay, that was the other one. So, so I see because I remembered seeing a th uh, like three. It was three toggles on top of the main one when I was mm -hmm. holding it, but I could, but I didn't take video of that, so couldn't really. It was more of a memory thing. So I think there's possibly a potential option that we'll see with an update that where they enable the three D sound because we do have three D video that three D effect video that they did uh, for uh, you know for video that they did not video sorry for pictures uh, that one that's similar to the one we see in Facebook. So. Mm -hmm. More things to come, new features to be added, and hopefully we'll hear the the pen option. Hopefully we'll see when that actually becomes available on the market. Uh, but uh, if you know, like I said, it's still too early to call. I hope we answered all your questions. We had a chance to go through. Um, so here we have a few questions. Here, are you able to do V60 full retail price on AT and T? You know, I'm not sure. I'm not sure as far as pricing and availability for AT and T yet. I I didn't see any official announcements, but. I think overall, whichever version you get, it'll be locked to whatever carrier. Uh, the ROG phone too, I think it's a great competitor as far as if you're doing, you start talking about gaming. But I think because I saw a comment in there as well uh, asking about basically you know this or the uh, you know, ROG two. Because I think yeah, the ROG two is a good device, but I think it's ROG two has been is even though it's you know running the eight fifty five plus, obviously it's still quite capable uh, from a processing standpoint. Uh, it's a 1080p 120 hertz display, but it doesn't it doesn't really have any interfaces for desktop experience. There's no dual screen options. Um, it's no, literally there, just there is a, a a dual screen for the ROG two. It's just really expensive if I remember correctly. Like I was it the was it a case? Or was it mostly the dock? Because I remember seeing the dock for no, it. I didn't get a dock, there, and there is also like a, a second screen. So. Oh, oh, that's right, that's right. They had that with the original, even with the original ROG. So um, they they had that. Be more expensive, but then you get, I think, better support for things like triggers. So again, okay. ROG. Oh, that's true. You you you've got that focus on gaming. You're going to get that faster refresh rate display. Um, yeah. And the air triggers are really handy. But that's kind of a tough call when I think the total package for uh, the uh, the ROG two is going to be more expensive than the V60 with the dual screen case. As it's sold, I think it starts at $899 and up, then that's without any accessories. Yeah, and this is full retail, full retail. I haven't looked up what recent pricing is on the ROG, and I'm sure you can shop a better deal, but mm -hmm. I haven't seen pricing on the uh, the ROG2 case recently to know what that's looking like now. Yeah, no, no, definitely. Uh, but what I wanted to kind of bring it in because I think we're getting we're getting closer to the end of the stream. I um, first and I want to say thank you to everybody, obviously, for joining us and making sure that we get uh, all the engagement and and thank you very much for all the super chats and to you, you know, Juan Carlos, for uh, giving me some of your time on Saturday morning. Definitely. Uh, so yeah, no, no. Uh, I think for me at least. Uh, well, let's go ahead and do this. I'll let you go ahead and do a quick like. If you can put it in maybe a, a very small paragraph, uh, you know, without giving out too much stuff, and of course, make sure you guys check out his videos because he's going to be having a lot more coverage as much as I have uh, on this. What 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 would you say is your initial twenty four hours uh, impressions of this device? If if there's a way to summarize it, my main concern is still size. Um, I, I feel like this this market where we've got plenty of representation for the absolute biggest phones on the market. Um. I'm still gonna reiterate. I, I feel like there there is still a smaller community of people out there that would appreciate these kinds of premium features, big battery life, you know, high performance chips, all of that stuff, in in some smaller form factor. I, I think that's still worth bringing up. For what LG is claiming, I feel the V60 is 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 doing better than LG's claims. That's mm -hmm. me. 
biggest issues that I found with like Apple marketing, for example, is lots of big aspirational statements and unlabeled bar graphs. And then the real world performance struggles to live up to that, to, to, to that expectation. LG doesn't push the same kind of media marketing. You know, it's not the same kind of like, let's over promise and under deliver. They're, they're a lot more reasonable about what they're trying to claim this device can do and what it, who it's for and, and why there are some of these like price performance um, uh, cost savings that they're building into this device. And then mm -hmm. the total package of this phone has exceeded my expectations for what LG showed us in that press event. So from my first hands-on experience to now, I am a lot more positive on some of the pivoting that LG is making here. I just hope that we can have kind of that nuanced conversation about why some features are here and why some features are different. It doesn't feel like a direct successor to the V50. This feels like a new arm of what LG is trying to accomplish. And if you ever got to play with the G8X, this is the new path from LG. So if you're going back to say like, well, my V40 had this, this, and this, different different aesthetic, different um, uh, expectations, different focus, different demographics. It's not a one-to-one. -one. This had a V, this has a V, so they're the same. LG is making some changes, and I think the V60 represents their new direction exceeding. Mm -hmm. well. So I, no, couldn't, couldn't, well, couldn't have said it better, but I will try to share my opinion. <laughs> of uh, how things are being gone going on uh, so initial impressions of this i i was very excited to get a chance to play with it a couple of weeks ago and I, I was very very sad that i didn't get a chance to spend enough time with it i am very happy with what i've seen so far um the battery performance so far seems to be pretty decent for me i actually I, the reason i say pretty decent is it's hard to gauge it from just a single day with heavy usage and setup it's a it's a little bit kind of uh i would say a, early just actually compare it to normal usage setup will always take a little bit more power but even then i wasn't able to kill the battery uh it still lasted me till the next day with about 17 percent left um, i am running this on this uh, on t-mobile's 5g so we're using obviously the full potential the x55 modem as well as the 865 so keep that in mind as far as performance this the device is promising us to give what promising us a uh, a very good optimized performance when it comes to connectivity, specifically on T-Mobile, as that's the variant that we have. And I do want to uh, catch one. Uh, we did have somebody comment saying that the uh, the the phone on AT and T is eight hundred dollars for the phone and nine hundred with the with the case. So still about same, basically same the same. Now. Yeah, it's literally a buck more. Um, so I think that's probably going to be the general consensus as far as price point. If you're thinking about getting this device. Uh, you're going to get a a very good set of hardware and uh, software optimizations. And we, as we saw in there, we saw some additional couple of features in the stream. Uh, one of them, obviously, is the 3D surround, uh, the 3D sound that's going to be coming in as part of the audio. And I feel like that's probably maybe wasn't ready yet. We saw pre software pre release software a couple of weeks ago or so. So that's why I was asking him because uh, he and I went to the same event. But I was hoping he had a uh, he had a snippet there. Uh, and then, of course, voice bokeh seems to be doing well. Uh, 8K is doing really nice. Stabilization, as you guys saw, about a minute and 11 seconds on an 8K one-minute clip. Um, it's So far, I'm, I'm very impressed. Um, my thing would be is I want to be able to see how this is handled once I have my entire suite set up on it and using it for about a week or so. And seeing, you know, once you start noticing those things that come up out of like, mm -hmm. you know, and obviously if we do get that one update, if things get, get improved and what features we add. Um, I am going to try to see if I can find that pen. That That is interesting. I like that. Yeah, I really want to see uh, what, I, what will support that. Yeah, no, totally. Because this makes perfect sense. Having a pen on something like this when you have the dual display uh, is just phenomenal. And, of course, we want to be able to see because it looks like it had a couple shortcuts for long press and single press at the double button. So it looked like it's going to have a double button functionality there. Um, but uh, it's very promising for the, for the for the viewers that did get a chance to uh, <laughs> uh, get a chance to pick it up. Uh, cannot wait to see from you guys any comments, samples, and stuff. Please tag us on on Instagram and on Twitter uh, just to let us share. You know, share with us all the things that you are experiencing with your device because I would love to hear your your feedback as well. Um, thank you, Juan, for again giving me some of your time. Thank you to everybody, uh, Sonic, uh, Harry's, uh, uh, Fat Produce, of course. Congratulations to you, my friend. Uh, I saw yeah, the tweet, and I want to say news from, from, good from news. Good news for you, my friend, and uh, congrats. Uh, and then, of course, to everybody in this in the stream. Um, I cannot 
there's no way to say this in any better way, but I want to say thank you. Thank you very much. Um, I hope you're safe. I hope you're happy. Be, you know, check in with your family, say hi to your friends and family, stay connected. Um, we may not be able to sit together, but we are always connected. So that's the beauty of where we are now. So uh, thank you very much. Hope you have a great rest of the day, depending where you are. Uh, if you're obviously depending where you are in the world, uh, we'll see you guys next time. Hopefully we'll try to do, maybe we can do, like I said, let me know in the comments if you guys want to see that thumper uh, challenge, yeah. just literally a straight thumper screen mirroring, no head, no, no talking head, nothing. We jump straight into the video because <laughs> he seems pretty cocky on that one. I don't, I don't know. I, I, I would love I to mean, be able to I'm not good at the game, but I love the game. It's just the hilarity of trying to play it over Bluetooth to me is, is exactly I, what's kind of lighting me up here. It's because it's going to be awful. You're going to watch two grown Absolutely. men completely <laughs> fail to play this game. So we'll do that too. Actually, that will be part of the video. We'll we'll be able to test it playing the game with wired headphones, stereo speakers, and of course the Bluetooth option. Um, and and you can watch us fail, or at least watch me fail tremendously. <laughs> uh, but again, thank you very much. Uh, like and subscribe. Make sure you check out uh, Juan Carlos's uh, tags. Everything will be available in the description. I think it's already in the description before we started the video. Um, and if you guys would like to check it out, your local carriers in the US car are carrying the V60. Um, again, no word yet as far as an unlocked and additional market. So to, to, so far, I haven't seen much. But what I would probably say is uh, at some point or another, we will probably see a G9 variant of this. There's a good possibility that the G9 will be the international model of, the C of G60. Uh, yes. No, V60. I'm messing up the numbers. But anyways, we'll see you guys in the next uh, next time. Uh, thank you very much, Juan Carlos, and everybody else in the live stream. See you then.